Hey everyone, this is Kai Werner and I want to talk to you about the shift left architecture today. This is an upcoming new design pattern. I see this coming up more and more across all enterprises and industries to optimize the architecture and get huge business value out of that. Before we discuss the shift left architecture, let's clarify what's the foundation of this. It is so-called data products, which are coming up with the new data mesh architecture principles, where the idea is that every business unit can focus on their own things with their own technology, but still leverage the data from other data sources and business units. Like in this example from McKinsey and Company, where it's not about technology, but really about the business value of data products. And what you see in this picture is where the data source can be any kind of system of record. This can be a transactional workload, like an ERP system or CRM, or this can be analytical data coming from a database or maybe from high volume data like clickstream logs or sensor IoT data. You feed the data into a data product so that others can consume it in good quality and in an ideal world with up-to-date, consistent information. So it's really important to understand this is not just for analytics. This is really for unifying operational and analytical workloads. And with that, with data products, we really see huge business value, like a much faster time to market because you can already access data that's in good quality and available when you need it without the need for further processing by yourself. And with that also, the data engineering efforts are much less. So it's a much reduced total cost of ownership. And with that, obviously, the risk and data governance burden can be reduced a lot. So this is in summary the business perspective on why so many enterprises focus on data products these days. Unfortunately, there's a lot of anti-patterns used here to create batch workloads with stale data, inconsistent information where the different consuming applications have different information available, either different time, right? Like one is real time, one is batch, so they see with different data, or they use different compute and processing. And so some applications might lose some data, some others simply didn't process it or used a different process to process it. And so the data is inconsistent on the consumer side on the right. And also with that, you have a lot of high compute cost because very often in such an analytical system, the data is processed again and again and again. And therefore, the common pattern these days in your favorite data warehouse, data lake or lake house architecture is that you ingest the data from the data sources, either already with data streaming or on the other side with some batch ETL tools. But then you feed the raw data into your analytical system and process it there again and again for filtering, enrichments and combination of different data sources. And this is not a good idea, as you see in this picture, because your different business units need to process it again and again, which is costly, it's a lot of efforts, and still it creates this inconsistent data and often stale data. And that's then fed into all these other analytics, AI and ML, or reporting platforms. And even worse than that, as you see at the bottom, then there is even dedicated technologies to do reverse ETL, where then you feed these batch process workloads into transactional operational systems in the business application, which is a complete anti-pattern because, well, the data was created on the left side in real time in good quality, and now you get worse data later with more cost and efforts to put that into a transactional system with very critical SLAs. So there's a lot of anti-patterns and challenges, as you can see here. And the other reality is also that most enterprises don't have just one analytical platform, but several ones. And therefore, there is a better pattern to improve this. And this is what's called the shift left architecture. This is an upcoming design pattern, a trend I see more and more in, in enterprises across industries. So on the left side, it's the same with all these different data sources, operational and analytical workloads with very different technologies. Not everything is real time here. There's a lot of batch, 
request response APIs, file-based systems. But as soon as you get the data out of there, it's getting as an event into an event-driven architecture. So at its core, the foundation of this is data streaming because here, all the data is real-time, scalable, and reliable. And if you use the right technology, then it's also in good data quality because you use schemas, data contracts, policy enforcement, access control, and so on for data sharing and processing. With this in mind now, you shift also the processing to the left side into the streaming platform because here you can process and act on data while it's in motion continuously process the feeds of data, no matter if it's coming from a real-time or a batch system. And then you can correlate and combine the data from one or more data sources, like you see in this picture with these different technical or business events. And then you correlate the data. So you have raw data streams, which is its own data product, but then you also get the correlated data products. And on the right side in the consuming applications, most data consumers, which is different business units or organizations, they typically only need correlated data products that is already filtered, aggregated, or enriched. And therefore, they can directly consume that. So this reduces the development efforts, this reduces the cost for the compute, and it increases the flexibility because you can choose your own technology here. It's not only one analytical platform where you do all your processing. You shift the processing to the left side in real time, reliably and with that then you can either directly process the data in the streaming platform or feed it in your choice of consumer no matter if that is an analytical system or an operational system with transactional criteria and slas like zero data loss low latency and cloud native scalability and this is the freedom of choice you have then for getting real-time data products with better quality and reduced cost. You can still use all your favorite analytical engines together with that, but you shift the, loss, the processing to the left side. This is the idea of the shift left architecture. And to show you one concrete example here, this is done with Apache Kafka, Apache Flink, and Apache Iceberg. And these are really de facto standards in the data streaming and in the data analytics world. Apache Kafka for data streaming and storage, Apache Flink for stream processing, and Apache Iceberg as a table format so that you can unify operational and analytical workloads with storing data only once and then consuming from any analytical or transactional system. So this is the main idea. And of course, you can also use many other technologies. This is just um, a few of the standards. We see a lot of adoption with open source and then also with related cloud vendors like Confluent Cloud, for example, provides all of this as a fully managed service. But of course, there is others like from the cloud service providers and there's other third party. You can also use other implementations like Red Panda, Warpstream or any other offering that does data streaming. But no matter what you use, open source or any cloud service, in the end, the shift left architecture brings all these benefits. You consume from all these data sources on the left side, transactional workloads, analytical workloads, high volume log and click streams or IoT sensor data. And you can also use other third party for the connectivity there, of course, or you directly stream the data into the streaming platform. And in the streaming platform, then you have here in this example, your Kafka topics, which present the data products. Usually you should use a schema for that to define the data contract and the policies behind that. And then you can have raw data products and curated processed products. The stream processor in this example with Apache Flink, but it could also be something like Kafka Streams or any other third party stream processing engine. But this is where you combine the data from different data sources and create your data products. But as you see in this picture, at its core, the data products are real-time, scalable, reliable, and in good data quality. It's shift left. And then you can consume it from any downstream application. You can directly stream the data there with Kafka, for example, into a transactional system like SAP, Salesforce, or ServiceNow. You can use connectors for Kafka, and also especially then for the analytical workloads like Snowflake, Databricks, Google BigQuery, Amazon Athena, and so on.
But also again for the stream processors, like Apache Flink has a unified streaming and batch API. So you can also use it for analytics, like I see many enterprises now replacing Apache Spark batch workloads with unified stream and batch in Flink. And then while you can natively use any kind of Kafka interface, even a REST API, you can also feed the data via an iceberg table. So like in Confluent Cloud, it's just a button click where you transform your Kafka topic and its schema into an iceberg table. And then when you use this from the Kafka topic with the schema behind that as a table, you can consume from any analytical workload out of the box without the need for a connector, without any custom coding or you know, error prone and um, a lot of efforts in the data engineering. So I've seen a few examples of that in the real world already, where you feed data into Kafka and then you transform it into an iceberg table and without any coding, you can consume from Snowflake and from Amazon Athena at the same time. But you only store the data once in an iceberg table. And this is typically then an object store under the hood like Amazon S3 or Google Storage. So that doesn't matter, but the data stored once and you can consume it everywhere. And you can even use this architecture for bidirectional communication. But the point at its core is, if you shift most of the processing to the left side for streaming ETL, you get good quality in real time so that you can reduce the cost on the right side in the analytics systems for not needing to store and pre-process the data again and again and again. And this is really where there's the great value of the combination of data streaming with Apache Flink and Kafka and Iceberg for the table format. Of course, again, you can also use other technologies for the table format. While I see most adoption of Iceberg these days, there's other technologies like Apache Hoodie or there is Delta Lake from Databricks and there is an open standard on top of all that with Xtable. We will see where all that goes. But in general, the shift left architecture helps you reduce the cost, faster time to market, good data quality, and its core, it's real time. So it's really for analytical and transactional workloads. I hope this was a good overview about the shift left architecture. Feel free to reach out to me and stay in touch. Follow me on LinkedIn, X, YouTube, whatever, and reach out to me with any feedback or questions like, do you also do the shift left architecture already? What's your main benefits? What's the technologies you're using? And also feel free to su subscribe to my newsletter on my blog, where you see new articles around all these topics all the time. This is Kai Wehner. Thanks a lot for watching.